What the heck has gone on? And by the way, in the whole world sees, knows it's going on too. Yes, I think what we're seeing right now is a reversion to Maoist policies on religion. So in theory, Article 36 of the Chinese Constitution guarantees against religious discrimination. In the 1980s, we saw under Xi Jinping, uh, Xi Jinping an opening up, um, a, a more of an ability for people to practice their religion. But right now under Xi Jinping, what we're seeing is a crackdown. We're, we're seeing a reversion. Under President Xi? Yes. So why? Mm -hmm. Why now? Why, why is, is this because power corrupts absolutely? Is this, you know, he's, he's sort of emperor for life right now? Does this get back to his basic instincts? Well, I think, you know, the Chinese communist regime has always viewed religion as a threat. Its assumption was that it could manage it out of existence. Um, that it was instead we've just seen religion explode in China. It's something that's basically appealing to people in a way that the Cultural Revolution destroyed civil society. This is something that's rebuilding it and restoring it. The United States Commission on International Religious Freedom says Christians in China are facing an alarming escalation of persecution. This week, Public Security Bureau police invaded and shut down Zion Church in Beijing. Moments before that raid, this sign appeared just outside the church sanctuary. Now it looks like this. PSB agents removed the sign. Bibles forcing Christians to renounce their faith. This persecution, just the latest attempt by Beijing to crack down on all religion. In August, the United Nations said China could be holding more than one million Uyghurs and, and other Muslims in internment camps for, quote, political education. Imagine a government official coming to your house, giving you a piece of paper and saying, deny Jesus Christ and say that I'm God instead. Yeah, because then what's next? Are they going to take the toll that the radical Islamists have done, where they do the same things with Christian missionaries and Christian, like Boko Haram has done with Christians in Nigeria, where they say, deny Jesus Christ or we behead you and your family? I mean, the communist regime hasn't gone that far yet, but I'm afraid that this is a very dangerous, slippery slope. And like you mentioned, I think oftentimes, specifically because our electronics and our clothes and lots of other things, entertainment even, Hollywood nowadays makes so many movies for the Chinese market because people there love Hollywood and entertainment and our music and, and our shows, right? But these are people that, despite the fact that they have iPhones and are making iPhones, are not able to use things like Google and Facebook. And now you are seeing a further crackdown on their religious liberties. And as you mentioned, we're seeing unbelievable persecution of Christians, crosses being torn down, Bibles being burned. These are, as Jillian said, Mao-like era policies. In fact, Human Rights Watch just came out with a report today talking about persecution of Uyghurs in Xinjiang. And they said that the types of policies that we are seeing with over a million people in these political, you know, prison camps or re-education camps, this is really reminiscent of human rights abuses we were seeing during the Cultural Revolution. Also this summer, other Christians throughout China have seen their churches closed or demolished. Government officials have arrested church leaders, they've confiscated and burned Bibles, and they're still removing crosses from atop church buildings. What in the world is going on in China and why now? This church was totally destroyed, you can tell. Uh, pastors uh, were being arrested and a prayer meeting were being readed and uh, even sentenced, uh, you know, 13 years, uh, uh, 10 years. Um, with the Uyghur situation, I think what's really telling is um, when persecution has happened in the past, we haven't heard about it because people are afraid of what's going to happen to their families. Here, their entire families are being shipped off to these camps. So the fact that they're speaking out is pretty telling. That's something I talk about all the time, that when the government mm -hmm. gives you something, they then have, they've bought you essentially. They have power over your life because all they have to do is threaten to take that away if you don't accept some other dictate from them. We see that happening right before our eyes in China. I've been watching this very shocking dystopian drama called The News. The Obamas now even have their own production deal at Netflix. My dream is that the only thing they produce 
is their own version of The Apprentice, and it gets way higher ratings. The only white people that think Jesus are Republicans and ex-crackheads. And it is one of Hollywood's biggest nights of the year, and stars at last night's Emmy Awards wasted no time, of course, getting political, taking aim this time at Christians and, of course, at the Republicans. And that shot um, at Jesus and at Christians, that was just a really low blow, drawing the comparison between Republicans and crackheads. It's no surprise the Emmys are the lowest rated, rated award show, and award shows generally are down in viewership. Global, uh, the Golden Globes down from 2017, Oscars hit an all-time low, Teen Choice Awards all-time low as well. Not surprised because most Americans don't want to watch out-of-touch liberals pat each other on the back. Barack and I agreed to be remain silent for a while to give this administration a chance to get up and running the first year. God forgive me. The president uses the White House as a literal, literal bully pulpit. Callously, callously exerting his power over those who have little or none. We are in a fight for America's soul. It's really interesting and quite curious that both Hollywood and liberals have a very odd habit of insulting half of the country. Joe Biden went on to call Trump voters the dregs of society. Eric Holder saying we were motivated motivated by fear. Obama called us all sorts of different labels two weeks ago, hateful, divisive, and then Hollywood last night insulting Christians. So the left and Hollywood do have something in common, and it's, it's insulting Trump voters. Well, new tonight, some people are upset after learning that Blunt County schools will no longer allow prayer over the loudspeaker before football games. Starting this week, there will be a moment of silence in place of the pregame prayer. Dear Heavenly Father, we thank you for this great night. Before the start of tonight's game, the crowd was led in prayer. For us to take Christ out of the picture is to deny who we are. At schools across the country, that once important part is now being ended. But in Mobile, at least one school will continue that. We are an education institution, but we are here uh, to integrate Christ into everything we do. So you're going to see prayer as part of all of our events, including football games. In northern Alabama, Blunt County School says the student-led prayer over the loudspeaker won't happen anymore because of a complaint saying it's unconstitutional. Many there aren't happy about it. I feel like we as Christians are being silenced, um, and so we have to go with the majority that's very loud. The way Kavanaugh has been treated by Democrats in the Senate, as well as by the media and the left-wing interest groups who obediently do their bidding in concert, gets to the most basic questions about what kind of country we want to live in. Does every American deserve due process? Are the accused presumed innocent rather than guilty? Does fairness still matter in this country? Well, to all of those, we'd answer yes. The left argues no. To them, acquiring power justifies anything. That's the real debate here. We thought you should know that. Kavanaugh vehemently denying the allegations in a statement writing, this is ridiculous and from the twilight zone. I don't know who this is and this never happened. From coast to coast on college campuses, in bars, office buildings, even at 10,000 feet, millions of Americans glued to their televisions, riveted, watching as Dr. Christine Blasey Ford spoke publicly for the first time. That Mr. Kavanaugh had sexually assaulted me. Tonight there are more allegations, consistent in many ways with the allegations we have already heard. Leading Democrats are calling these new claims powerful, compelling, and highly credible. They are all but daring Republicans to question the new accusers. The victims, they say, must be believed. Here's a selection of the charges. I saw Sarah Good with the devil! I saw Goody out born with the devil! I saw Bridget Bishop with the devil! I saw Goody out with the devil! I saw Goody Barrow with the devil! I saw Goody Good with the devil! I saw Goody out born with the devil! Oh, just kidding. That's a scene from The Crucible, which you'll remember is the Arthur Miller play about the Salem witch trials. Miller wrote The Crucible back in 1953. That was a time when liberals still cared about civil liberties and due process and the right to face your accuser. Miller wrote it as an allegory about the McCarthy hearings. The McCarthy hearings were a period the left deeply hated until they took power and recreated it themselves. Nowadays, you wonder if progressives still read Miller's play. And if so, are they outraged by it? Maybe not. 
it might seem completely reasonable to them. Mob accuses villager of witchcraft. Villager denies it because witches always deny it. Prove you're not a witch, they scream. The witch can't, proving beyond a doubt that she is in fact a witch. To the stake she goes. Sexual assault accusations against his Supreme Court nominee, Brett Kavanaugh. When I look at what's happened to the reputation of a great gentleman, a great intellect, a brilliant man, somebody that has a chance to be one of our great Supreme Court justices in history, intellectually, I think it's a shame. All this as another accuser emerged today with a sworn statement alleging another account of sexual misconduct. The problem is that outside party headquarters in D.C., people out there don't understand this. When they hear a U.S. senator call Brett Kavanaugh a sex criminal, they believe it. Why wouldn't they believe it? Because that's the other thing that never changes, ever. Human nature. There's a mob instinct in people, a gut-level desire to worship the powerful and hurt the unpopular. It's always there, in every population, in every country, from the beginning of time until now. Wise leaders know that. Wise leaders fear that. They try to keep it contained. They never stoke the mob instinct. Once unleashed, there is no controlling where a mob winds up or who it destroys. You can tell a mob is building by the way people start talking, like this. I think there's a compromise here, and uh, well, hear me out on this. So, Kavanaugh gets confirmed to, to the Supreme Court. Okay, well, in return, we get to cut that pesky penis of his off in front of everyone. <laughs> So that's where we are. Castration. Medieval moments call for medieval remedies. It's really unfortunate, though, because many Chinese Christians I know don't see any contrast between being a good patriotic Chinese citizen and being a strong Christian. But I think if they're forced to choose, uh, history has shown that Jesus wins every time.